Hello and welcome to our show Health and Wellness Myths versus Facts I'm Gargi Rawat the healthcare systems across the world have been dramatically impacted by the covid pandemic now this has had a knock on effect on the diagnosis and treatment of other diseases with the emergence of omicron it is clear that the pandemic is not has not ended yet and coronavirus is mutating and more variants may appear in the future Now those with chronic disease conditions are most affected the prevalence of diabetes heart disease is increasing every day it's difficult though not impossible to decrease the pace of the rapidly increasing cases of diabetes and heart disease in India awareness about prevention and management can be a great help to people Today we have with us experts to share their advice on leading a healthy life and do remember you can uh, WhatsApp us any questions that you may have on the following number that will show up on your screen so do send us any queries that you may have for our doctors we're joined by Dr Vikram uh, Vikhe uh, who is a uh, professor of medicine at uh, Dr DY Patel Medical College and uh, Hospital and Research Center Pune and Dr Shravan Singh uh, Assistant Professor SP Medical College Haldira Mulchand PBM Hospital Bikaner thank you so much doctors for joining us on the program and uh, we have a question uh, for from uh, one of our viewers a question that was uh, a question that was sent in for this program uh, the person asks my mother is 81 she is diabetic on medicine not insulin for the past 35 years she hasn't taken the vaccine yet due to a mild stroke is it safe for her to take the vaccine and what precautions should be taken This is a question uh, from uh, uh, Pune uh, by uh, Mr. Sunil Dua. Yeah, uh, sure. So, Dr. Vikram, if you could answer that. Yeah. Now you should uh, remember that uh, type one diabetes and type two diabetes patients uh, can develop a severe COVID-19 infection. Okay. So, the recent studies uh, published in a uh, journal of uh, endocrinology diabetology uh, in October 2020 states that. patient of type 1 and type 2 diabetes are going to develop a very severe covid-19 infection than non non diabetic patients so yes this patient should go for covid vaccination with prior precautions second thing i want to just emphasize that currently we have two vaccines available right now one is covid shield and co vaccin both vaccines are studied in phase 3 trials and the results are very fine So 75 percent efficacy is there with COVID shield and co vaccine. COVID shield is a adeno or live adeno virus vaccine, which has got a glycoprotein antigen against SARS-CoV-2 antigen, and efficacy is safe. Second is co vaccine is a killed vaccine. Now, what precautions should be taken before vaccination? Now, each and every each and everybody should know that routine vaccinations will cause minor side effects. And what are the minor side effects that will occur in first 24 to 48 hours? first will be there will be swelling or redness at the site of the injection patient may have mild fever headache then patient will have rashes over the body but these are reported in very minor percentage of patients so they can just observe this uh, side effects in first 24 to 48 hours and then they can contact the clinician or diabetologist which they are uh, constantly dealing with then late side effects due to covid vaccines are reported nil till date so in my opinion this should this uh, patient sh- uh, this lady should go for vaccination secondly she is a very old lady so uh, if, uh, if even after vaccination she is going she will develop uh, mild covid infection that will be very mildly symptomatic okay so i my, my opinion is she should go for vaccination so both vaccines covid shield and co vaccine are safe and she should go for vaccination covid shield is usually given first dose Uh, on day one and the second dose now is given of 84 days to and uh, 120 days and precaution should right. be also taken she should okay All, all right. Well, I hope that's helpful for uh, Mr. Sunil Dua regarding his mother, and thank you for sending in that question, uh, Doctor Singh. A question for you now. It's believed that Omicron-infected people experience mild symptoms. You know, that's what uh, we know anecdotally. However, some patients do experience high fever, severe cold, and cough. Uh, can it cause major damage to the health of people? Yes, ma'am. Actually, knowing how frequently Omicron causes severe disease is important, but even mild average symptom presentation due to its high incidence may be may become important burden to the society through loss of productivity, sickness, distress, and by putting extra pressure on the healthcare workers. As 
Fortunately, as compared to the Delta virus, Omicron has got 80% less chances of getting hospitalized. And out of the hospitalizations, only 15 to 20% are getting severe symptoms. One thing I want to emphasize here is that vast majority of the patients who are having mild COVID symptoms need not to worry about their hearts. People with pre-existing heart conditions still need to protect themselves and there are many ways to do so. First, get yourself uh, vaccinated in the appropriate booster doses. Avoid crowded indoors. And I recommend N95 masks uh, for cardiac patients uh, in place of uh, cloth masks which we are using nowadays. Keep in contact with your healthcare provider and continue taking medicine as prescribed. Another important thing here is you should get reliable information uh, from a reliable source rather than uh, relying on anyone. Some false remedies actually being promoted on the social media can uh, harm your heart as well. Some of the people may be concerned about the changing treatment with every COVID wave. So, actually it's not uh, the change in the treatment, it's upgradation for with the better understanding of the virus, its pathology, as well as disease process. That's how the science goes. Thank you. All right, that, that's an important point, you know, to make so people uh, realize that, uh, you know, you doctors have only had this uh, two years to really figure out how to treat the disease and it's been a learning process as well and uh, other medic medicines have emerged. Uh, Dr. Vikram, uh, diabetes causes multiple complications affecting almost every body part. Do these uh, complications then start showing their effect immediately after getting detected with diabetes or do they manifest at a later date? Yeah, this is a good question. Actually, diabetes has got... Uh macrovascular complications and microvascular complications. The macrovascular complications are uh, coronary artery disease, uh, cerebrovascular disease that will lead to systemic stroke or embolic stroke or hemorrhagic stroke and third one is peripheral vascular disease. The most acute complication which is occurring in type 1 and type 2 diabetes is diabetic ketoacidosis. We call it diabetic coma. Now, this diabetic ketoacidosis occur in type 1 diabetes also, which are insulin dependent and type 2 diabetes also. So, it can occur as an early manifestations if the patient is not taking insulin regularly or the non-insulin dependent diabetic patient is not taking her oral hypoglycemic agents regularly. So, these complications are going to occur in these patients and it has to be treated with uh, bolus insulin and patient usually recovers well with this. And you should also see for her uh, renal functions and uh, other uh, the, this uh, monitoring of electrolytes. Second thing uh, is hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia is very known with oral hypoglycemic agents. And so hypoglycemia notice or unnoticed episodes of hypoglycemia can occur with insulin also and with the oral hypoglycemic uh, drugs also. Then uh, peripheral neuropathy. Peripheral neuropathy is involvement of the peripheral nerves. If a lady who is a recently diabetic, uh, diagnosed diabetic type 2 diabetes who is on oral hypoglycemic agents she has skipped her medicine or there is a poor control of diabetes this lady is going to develop peripheral neuropathy she is going to come to you with uh, uh, symptoms of tingling numbness and burning feet syndromes so she this lady should be investigated for peripheral neuropathy so these are the three common early complications that can occur but if a fair control of diabetes is there good control with a good glycosylated hemoglobin level of 7 to 7.5, these complications can be prevented. So early complications are there. And the late complications are affection of the uh, retina, that is diabetic retinopathy. It is a proliferative retinopathy, non-proliferative retinopathy, diabetic nephropathy, which is usually late, and uh, infections, skin infections are also there. Multiple skin infections occur late. So this patient should be uh, investigated likely. And if a good and fair control of diabetes is there, these complications can be avoided. Yes, they can develop from these complications. All okay, right. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, we have another WhatsApp question. And Dr. Singh, I'll pose this to you. This is uh, from Siraj. And he wants to know what diet plan should be followed uh, by people post-COVID recovery? Yes, ma'am. Uh, first, I recommend small frequent meals because of nausea and uh, some remaining shortness of breath post-COVID recovery. Uh, I should, uh, we should prefer 
home cooked fresh and warm food we should incorporate more protein rich sources like paneer tofu soya fish poultry curd pulses and legumes uh other healthy fats like soaked almonds uh flax seed avocado coconut chutney etc may be included in the diet nourishing foods traditional indian foods like chickpea dalia with some spices and vegetables are good and it's important to keep yourself hydrated with drinking lots of water made fruit juices uh we should avoid excessive oils ghee cheese spices heavy meals as they can cause nausea acidity and digestion or bloating thank you all right well uh, we'll slip into a short break now and uh, come back with more questions for our doctors stay tuned Welcome back you're watching health and wellness with sin facts and let's go across to our doctors and doctor uh, vikram people living with diabetes have an increased risk of a lower limb amputation can it be prevented and at what stage uh, can we avoid it yeah sure now you should know what are the stages of uh, diabetic food now there are six stages first one is a normal food second is a high risk food the high risk food has got risk factors of peripheral neuropathy vascularity ischemia swelling and callosity at the joint third one is a ulcerated food fourth one is a necro infected food fifth one is a necrotic food and last one is unsalvaged food now this uh, these are the six stages now what are the adequate measures and preventive measures that can take place there are four mechanisms first one is good metabolic control that your sugar should be well controlled patient should have regular insulin therapy remember diabetic food is Uh, insulin is only indicated for diabetic food usually or oral hypoglycemic agent don't help second word, one is good debridement adequate debridement and management of uh, infections so the patient should have good uh, proper dressing of the wound and diabetic food the limb should be elevated second one, third one is adequate uh, vascularity and last is adequate offloading now what is meant by offloading offloading is defined as any major to eliminate abnormal pressure points or the diabetic food now it can be done with strict bed rest of the food and there are a lot of uh, uh, different methods available use of crutches or walkers if the patients are affording total contrast casts they are available then uh, modified footwears are available modified soles are available if patient can afford that and they use that definitely patient's diabetic food is going to get better and stage uh, below the stage of 4 4 5 6 stage an amputation can be prevented with a good uh, all, because of all these uh, precautions and all these mechanisms secondly diabetic food education is also important patient should be educated regarding the diabetic food he should be educated regarding the modern footwears and this is very important now we can see per see uh, every minute in india according to the data which i got Uh, per minute at least one or two amputations take place in india but exact data is not recorded because we don't maintain a diabetic food registry so this can be prevented in patients of diabetes right so this preventive measures should be taken place right and Thank it's you. very important to be aware of this because uh, you know i i know people yeah. like, want to avoid thinking about such a risk and, and it sounds so uh, you know uh, serious having a, a limb amputated but people need to be aware especially if your loved ones have diabetes they need to be aware of these yeah, risks yeah, sure. which are this very very common people should be aware and yeah. absolutely and know exactly Thank what what they need to do to avoid it uh doctor saying now cardiovascular diseases are the leading cause of uh, death worldwide and they're also one of the most expensive diseases uh, which are preventable and non preventable risk factors and which can cause a cardiovascular disease okay some of the factors which cannot be prevented which are uh, we can't do anything about them these include age when the males are more than 45 years of age and female more than 55 years of age uh it is an independent risk factor to develop cardiovascular disease another is gender females are usually protected because of estrogen uh and uh, diabetes do more harm in female as compared to the males race and ethnicity black and uh, south east asians have got a high propensity to develop cardiovascular disease another thing we can't uh, do much about that is our family history especially the first degree relatives 
uh, some risk factors, these are important ones, which uh, we can prevent. Uh, these include uh, increased blood pressure, cholesterol, and triglyceride level. These are implicated in uh, causing cardiovascular diseases. We should maintain a healthy weight by eating a healthy diet like fresh fruits, vegetables, and all grains. We should get regular exercise at least 30 minutes in a day, most of the days in a week. And uh, we should limit or uh, stop it altogether, the alcohol consumption. And, uh, smoking should be uh, stopped. And uh, we should manage stress as it is implicated in many things like binge eating, binge drinking, and uh, all that. We should manage our diabetes, we should get enough sleep. Uh, that should be uh, at least six to seven hours. All right, uh, Dr. Vikhe, as we all know, diabetes is the disease of complications. Can diabetes affect a person's memory and other cognitive disorders? Yes, sure. Now, mild to moderate cognitive impairment is known in old elderly diabetics. Now, dementia. Dementia is common. Dementia is chronic forgetfulness. Second is Alzheimer's disease also been reported. And third one is depression. And fourth one, which is gone, which is generally unnoticed by the patient himself, that is hypoglycemia. So these four cognitive disorders are known in chronic diabetic patients. Now, how, how it can be prevented, that is very important. Now, American Diabetic Association generally recommends a neuropsychological evaluation of all older diabetes on an initial visit, then six by every visit six months or yearly, depending what on what type of cognitive impairment the patient he or she has got. Now, this can be assessed with a mini mental scale examination, then a Montreal assessment cognitive scale and geriatric depression scale. Now, my mini mental scale examination is done from scale of 1 to 15. It is recorded a pro forma. Same is with the Montreal assessment cognitive scale, which has got five domains. First is reasoning, second is abstract, third one is memory. Memory has got soft, uh, few uh, sub domains of uh, intentional memory, then recent memory, late memory, then forgetfulness, learning rate, pronunciation skills. So all these should be recorded on a pro forma and, uh, and it should be kept as a record. And the, when the patient comes to the next visit to the diabetologist or a clinician, he should be evaluated for the same. Apart from this, patient should have a good glycemic control. He should take the, his uh, diabetic medicines regularly. Whether he's on insulin, he should take regularly. And he should be educated for hypoglycemic episodes that per se will cause history of falls also and other symptoms like dizziness and giddiness. So it can be avoided. And anti depression is a most common thing that is generally occurring in very chronic diabetics that should also be taken care of. And precisely, patient may put on some antidepressant medication also recommended by ADA. So, this cognitive uh, impairment can be prevented uh, with these uh, efforts. All right. And uh, from diabetes management to heart management, Dr. Singh, when we talk about heart damage or heart disease, it can be of various types and uh, may have different causes. Defects in the heart valve also can cause heart failure. What are the causes of heart valve disease? Okay, we know heart has got four chambers and four walls. Walls open and close in a synchronous manner to regulate the blood flowing into the heart and then away from the heart. Diseased wall can be either leaky or it can be narrowed to cause obstruction to the flow. The most common and most important thing I want to emphasize here is that in a country like India, rheumatic heart disease is an important cause of valvular heart disease. It follows, we can say it's a sequelae of acute rheumatic fever, which is seen in the age group 5 to 15 years in children. So, whenever your child gets fever, sore throat, and joint pain, you should immediately see a pediatrician and get the prescribed treatment for the duration. Second important cause is uh, congenital that may lead to uh, uh, stenosis or we can say regurgitation leakage through the wall. Instead of three leaflets in a wall, there are two leaflets. Other important causes which may be associated with wall damage include heart attack heart failure, high blood pressure, deposition of calcium, magnesium, and cholesterol in the wall, which we call atherosclerosis, some autoimmune diseases like lupus, exposure to high-dose high dose radiation, 
base related calcium deposits. All these are leads to wall damage, which can be leaked or causing obstruction. So this may present as shortness of breath, chest pain, fatigue, dizziness, fainting, increased heart rate may be there, irregular heart beats may be there, rapid weight gain with uh, edema of uh, swelling of feet. And treatment is mainly medical as well as surgery. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Singh and Dr. Vikhe, for taking out time and answering our, all our questions so patiently and very helpful uh, for our viewers. And do remember to write in uh, with any questions that you may have for our doctors. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.